I'm Jill Kenton. I'm Myling Class's friend, and I do fit Camilla. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. yes, yes indeed. Uh, Jill is uh, Mylene's uh, purveyor of pants for the Royals. Well done and thank you for coming. Jill Kenton. Yes, uh, Jill has fitted uh, Camilla Parker Bowles' underwear. Now she's in the Royal family, of course. Camilla has to be rather more frugal uh, when she gets bored with her lacy underwear. It's handed down to Prince Edward. <laughs> And so to telly tales around in which classic TV shows of yesteryear are resurrected for our viewing pleasure and Lee's team then intrigue us with an additional related fact. This week our specialist area is Saturday morning children's TV, a world where men's knitwear plummeted new depths and disaster was always just a haircut away. <laughs> so Lee is up uh, with his fact loosely related to these well-known pop critics. That's Pepsi and Shirley and Heartache, Mrs Thatcher, what about you? I didn't think it sounded like heartache at all. I thought the nearest it got to heartache was that almost ballet bit, you know, with several people standing up in the background moving. That was the nearest to heartache. Otherwise, it was thump, thump, thump. I accept very professional, but nothing like heartache. Yes, a love, yes, good voices, professional production, but not quite what I would expect of heartache. I would say three. Three, three. for you. Yes. Would you dance to it? <laughs> no, I wouldn't, because there was no melody. There certainly was rhythm. You could do a movement to it. You could do a movement to any rhythm. You could do a movement to a drum without having any song. But there was no melody and no heartache. Pepsi and Shirley not quite cutting it for Mrs Thatcher there. She was always more of a Guns N' Roses fan. Uh, anyway, uh, Lee, what is your related fact to that clip? Um, did you know that Mike Reed often uh, does a musical turn at the Tory party conference? And last year, it was a ten-minute political rap. Do you notice how the whole mood has dropped since we saw a clip of Margaret Thatcher? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to live anymore. <laughs> Every, oh, yeah, I remember that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> so what bit of the Tory... Is this, like, the main assembly bit? Yes. After so... the Shadow Chancellor's done his speech? Yeah, now, as just... usual, what you're all here for, <laughs> Mike Reed's ten-minute rap. Yeah, but... <laughs> You've got to remember that Tories are a bit stuffy and boring, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they're stuffy and boring, but they're not, you know, complete morons. <laughs> I think it's true, because the Tory party are so out of sync with reality that that's the sort of thing that they might go, Mike Reed's very popular, isn't he? <laughs> what about Mike Reed? It all makes sense. Yeah. I don't think they could be that out of sync with reality <laughs> and still know where Parliament is. <laughs> I just don't think it's true. I'm well, prepared so, to go okay. with that. Well, you're the we think it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, OK. Let's find out if you're right, Lee. It actually is true. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> it's a very hard one to do this. I'm sorry. How are, they, how are they ever going to get back into office? <laughs> Aren't they trying? Is it match-fixing? <laughs> Someone bribing them to be terrible at politics. <laughs> Mike Green, ten minutes rapping. What the f is that? <laughs> the democracy in this country. The, 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 you know, the, the, the reason, the reason Tony Blair can start wars for no, you know, you know without asking people, is because there's no opposition. <laughs> you know, it's their fault. It's Mike Green's Reed's fault. fault. <laughs> of our serviceman <laughs> on his conscience. <laughs> I, I sorry, do... sorry, David. I've made a mistake. It's false. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, false, uh, no, false. it is true. I do uh, hope Mike Reed is watching this. Um, <laughs> yes, he does uh, traditionally round off the uh, Tory party conference with a song. Uh, it saves security having to usher people out of the building. <laughs> And so, joyously, we come to the final round. Some quick-fire truths and or lies for our panellists. And remember, they still have no idea what's written on the other side of the card. Uh, sensational truth or utter tosh. Starting now... <coughs> Leslie. I have been banned from Streatham Ice Rink. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, what did you do? I was, was skating with my friend, and you had to go upstairs to really see the nice blokes. And I didn't know, unbeknown to me, but you weren't allowed upstairs. And so uh, we got asked to leave downstairs, and I just got a bit gobby. 
So, what, sorry, what's the upstairs of an ice cream? Oh, no. is that... <laughs> the upstairs is where the viewing gallery. And, so, um, why did they throw you out? Or why someone had moved the sign saying, don't go up there. And um, <laughs> me and Geraldine Hellard just thought, we'll go up there anyway. Good use of specific name of a possible person who exists. <laughs> Um, How old will you be? About this time? 14. Okay. Is this I, stacking up? I just think the sign had been moved. You went in there anyway. It's an honest mistake. Yeah. Why would they ban you from the ice? No, no, no. no. Well, the ice warden came up and said, "You're not allowed so up what? here." <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a great job title. Isn't it? <laughs> I am the ice warden. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I I do not. I own the ice, I guard the ice for future generations. I am one with walrus and seal. Uh, and oh, so, stop. so she oh, came up stop. to you, he came up to you, and he said, came up to, and, and he said you, you, I'm going to have to take you downstairs. So he took me downstairs, and unbeknown to me, he was actually taking me outside the door. Were you uh, still in your skates <laughs> at this stage? <laughs> I'm thinking. just a little bit worried that he's not thought it through and you're gonna... <laughs> but Ice Warden Man can breathe on the floor! <laughs> <laughs> All the way home! <laughs> Me and Geraldine Hellard yeah. tossed out into the street in our, in our sheepskin coats and I just turned around and went, F*** off! <laughs> so that might have been when you were back. <laughs> It was the obscenity to the ice warden moment. Ice warden. Yeah. So ice wardens don't take kindly to that. No. <laughs> Dave, what's your conclusion? I don't really believe this. You know what, though? It's so bad, it's good. I, I think it's a lie. Right, well, there's two of us think it's a lie, so I think we say it's a lie. Yeah, they're saying it's a lie. OK, the yeah. truth then, Leslie. It's true. Oh! It is completely true. Nice work, Leslie. Yeah, thank you. Uh, it's true, Leslie is banned, or was banned, from uh, Stratum Ice Rink. Uh, next, David. I have formulated a five-point plan for surviving if I were in prison. <laughs> David, please tell us this five-point plan for surviving in prison. OK. One, I have to use the fact that uh, I, I've got a degree in some way. I have to sell the fact that I, you know, have, have knowledge. Right. Secondly, I have to, in some way, find someone who is physically strong to try and, you know, save, save me, you know, from the, the, vi the big men and the soap dropping and the, and the bar. <laughs> Thirdly, I have to make sure that this person isn't a person who will bum me. <laughs> Fourthly, I need, I need to have some commodity I can sell, so I need to have some deal with someone I knew on the outside, bringing in something like, uh, you know, cigarettes, so that I could, um, you know, sell them to other inmates. Right. And number five? <laughs> and, yeah, number five would be to get a, uh, a PhD while I was in there. What is the likelihood of you actually going to prison? Well, cut a long story short, I, I, did, um, I did a terrible, terrible thing, but I got away with it. <laughs> Or, so or, this, or was, a, this was an imminent... No, I, was, I formulated this when I was a, a late teenager and I, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, was, I was frightened of prison. How old were you? I think 17 or 16, 17. So, so the first one was what, sorry? To get a degree? A degree. No, that was the last use one. Use degree. No, no, the first one you said was to oh, use your degree. Use your but degree. you were 17. Yeah, no, so part of your five-point plan of how to survive in prison is I must get a degree, and number five yeah. is I must get a PhD. It's this yeah. kind of talk that's going to get you into trouble in prison in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't five topics of conversation when in prison. Oh. I, I wasn't going to bring these things up. So what are you going to do while you're here? <laughs> I seem to have a cocktail in my hand. <laughs> Why am I the only one? <laughs> oh, I've dropped my cocktail. Uh, Don't pick don't it up. Pick it up. <laughs> Uh, what What's are you thinking, thinking then? Do you know what? I'll tell you why I think it's true. is because Dave is one of the few people I know that if he did do a five-point plan, if I was doing a five-point plan, it would be like, get a brick, get a rounder's bat, get something else that's big. But David involves two forms of education within the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, degree, PhD. Maybe I should make it a seven-point plan and get the Masters. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a lie. Uh, what do you think, Leslie? I think it's bullshit. I think, <laughs> I'm with you, Leslie. I think you're a big liar. <laughs> I'm trying to fight, 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 fight. <laughs> so, Lee, you're the team captain. What's your verdict? I think that what he's saying is utter rubbish, and that's a lie. David, put us out of our misery. Uh, yes, I'm afraid to say it is a lie. It is. Yes. Well, yeah. well, 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 well,
Absolutely right. It is a lie. David has not formulated a five-point plan for surviving there, if he were in prison. Are there other cards in here like, you know, you had 19 different names for your grandmother? What are they? <laughs> uh, granny. <laughs> nah. Um, um, yes. A five-point plan, plan for how to survive in prison. I've got no idea how to survive in prison. Don't go to prison. <laughs> Only commit crimes you can get away with. Yeah. <laughs> that was horrible. That was nasty. Uh, next. <laughs> Leslie, again. I have never eaten an apple, not even taken a bite. Um, why not? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually allergic. It's right. really upsetting. How, how did you find out you're allergic to it's apples? Actually, only to the green variety, which is like either the Golden Delicious or the Granny Smith. I don't know what it is. It's something in the skin that makes it green that I get allergic So you've eaten reactions. other apples that are not the ones you're allergic to? I'm all to. right with the yellow ones. Oh, you're, so you've eaten the yellow ones? Yeah, and red ones. So just read your statement again. <laughs> <laughs> I have never... Yeah. ...eaten... A green. A green. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, they've made a mistake here. <laughs> Them. I, don't, I told them upstairs, I said, it's green. They made a mistake on one of my cards as well, and they said that I'd made a five-point yeah. plan for surviving if I were in prison. Um, uh, that's... I, I, could I possibly push you for a verdict? I think that's a lie. You're saying it's a lie, Leslie? Oh, tell us. Oh, it's... Surprise, surprise. A it is a lie. <laughs> And that uh, electronic flatulence signals the end of uh, that final round. And it's Lee's team who are tonight's conquerors, having vanquished David's team 11-7.